All right, hi, and welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here. Have, hope you're all having a great day today. In this video, we are talking about HBO. We are talking about Slenderman attempted murder. We're talking about using photos and art and paintings in your videos, your YouTube videos. Everybody's trying to build their YouTube channel, uh, their, their social media accounts through the use of video. And they're trying to do it with other people's content. Well, that's always risky, as we've been talking about. So here's a case out of New York, United States District Court. This is general legal information only. May not be reliable. Laws change. Rulings change. Things can change on appeal. All kinds of things. So this is general information only and for your edification purposes. All right. So here we are, VondrenLegal.com, California Intellectual Property Entertainment Law also licensed in Arizona. So this is about fair use, documentaries, and presumptions. Presumptions of fair use, uh, but it didn't work here at the motion to dismiss stage. So let's take a quick look at the allegations. Attorney St Steve case brief here. You can see this is very short. So uh, some, some of my last ones have been pretty long, so I apologize for that, but a lot of information to convey to you. So here's the allegations. HBO was sued for using plaintiff's painting, plaintiff. Mr. Coleman, um, if you want to know more about the picture, which is very cool, I would suggest you take a few seconds and look it up. It's very cool. I don't want to show it because obviously HBO got sued. I don't want to get sued. Um, HBO, uh, but Google Images, go to Google Images, Coleman Slenderman. You should be able to find the photo for your viewing pleasure. It's very cool, as I mentioned. And they use this painting in its HBO documentary, Beware the Slenderman. Beware the Slenderman. Go watch the trailer. It's pretty cool. Um, which apparently could be seen by as many as 125 million uh, from what I was able to gather. And a motion to dismiss defendant. The allegation was that approximately 25 seconds of the painting was shown. Defendant denied it, filed a motion to dismiss. The court denied the motion to dismiss, which was based on fair use grounds, seemingly because it was premature to dismiss. And as you know, if you've been watching my videos, if you don't go watch Google Attorney Steve fair use four factors, you'll find out the four factors. I'm only talking about one in this case. And this is the first factor, the nature and character of the use. So the court decided it was a little premature to dismiss this on a motion to dismiss, even though this is a documentary. And as you can see here, what I'm about to show you is documentaries and biographies may be entitled to a presumption of fair use, which means it could be presumably fair use, but that doesn't mean once you apply all four factors that it's actually going to be fair use because in fair use law, they apply review all four factors. Okay. So here it is, um, as the court noted, now this is from the ruling on Judge Brody's, Judge Brody's order on the motion to dismiss as Margot Brody, the Honorable Mar Margot Brody. Some courts within the Second Circuit have found that documentaries and biographies fall within the protected categories of one, Section 107, that's a fair use, and are entitled to the presumption of the, of the presumption that the use of the copyrighted material is fair. Now, again, keep in mind, if it's fair use, it's not copyright infringement. So that's going to be the, the main issue, as, as I can tell in this case. Um, and here's some case law cited, finding that a documentary about Muhammad Ali was a biography and therefore undeniably constituted a combination of comment, scholarship, and research all of which enjoyed favor status under Section 107. So the court was talking about a biography about Muhammad Ali, greatest fighter of all time, most entertaining in my opinion. Um, loved Mike Tyson too, but um, Muhammad Ali, the greatest in my opinion. Uh, but they said that was a combination that was comment, commentary, scholarship, and protected free speech. So in, the, in this case, the court went on and looked further at the statutory fair use first factor and the court said the first statutory factor also requires courts to consider whether copyrighted materials are used for a commercial purpose or for a nonprofit educational purpose so let's take a look at that real quick so the HBO documentary is not necessarily a 
nonprofit, to my knowledge anyway. I believe that's a for-profit entity. I could be wrong, but I don't. I think it's for-profit. And, you know, obviously the documentary is designed to be distributed to its paying customers, so it does appear to be a commercial purpose. So that looks like a question of fact that's going to have to be weighed out. Um, The court saying the former, the commercial purpose, tending to weigh against a finding of fair use. So the court wasn't really ready to dismiss this case just quite yet, okay? Um, If ever, who knows? Um, While the mere fact of a commercial motivation rarely pushes the first factor determination against fair use, in some circumstances, a commercial motive will weigh against a finding of fair use under factor one. So it looks like, again, maybe a question of fact, maybe more facts need to come out, see what's going on here. And finally, the less a use provides transformative value, the more its commercialism will weigh against a finding of fair use. Okay, so uh, in this case, um, HBO tried to argue, well, this was transformative because we were really just showing it on a computer screen, the the painting on a computer screen. So um, it's really interesting. Uh, The court wasn't seeming to buy that. Um, But this is an interesting case. You can look it up. It's about two um, girls, young girls, that stabbed their friend, uh, motivated by uh, this internet sensation of a of a slender man, a, a person like six to fourteen feet tall. So go go look up the story, watch the trailer. It's pretty crazy, but this just goes to show you down here to my final point. When you're building your YouTube channel, your Twitter channel, you're building videos, you're doing all this stuff, your Instagram, these other accounts that you can use videos on. Be safe. Clear the content in your videos. Pictures, logos, logos, people, you know, models, other video clips you're trying to use in there. Get or get a fair use opinion letter. Your first bet is always to go approach them, try to get a license. Of course, the the negatives to that is somebody says, oh, I want five grand and, you know, then you're kind of stuck. So sometimes getting a fair use opinion letter is the way to go. We can help with copyright infringement claims, fair use opinion letters, and other copyright issues and issues dealing with social media and YouTube. So if you need some help, you know where to find us. I should have put it on here, but you all are probably starting to figure it out by now. AttorneySteve.com is the place to go. AttorneySteve.com, the first name in legal services. So hope you enjoyed this. Um, Deals with fair use. We'll keep you posted. We'll let you know how this claim goes. Joe Coleman. And HBO, um, my suspicion is there will probably be a settlement uh, because I think it is kind of a close kind of question based on what I've read. But you never know. Sometimes you get uh, big companies like HBO and they want to fight it out all the way and you see what happens. But we'll keep you posted. But that's your breaking IP news. Breaking IP news for the day. Hope you're having a great day. I got to get back to work. Lots of clients to take care of. We'll see you again. If you like this video, make sure to like it. Feel free to share it on your social media networks. Don't be afraid to subscribe. We're going to hit our 15,000 um, subscribers this year, probably next month. So we appreciate you all for watching. Have a great day.